Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I thought I'd just jump on here and do a quick video about the sort of maths that you could be expecting to cover in an economics degree so that it, maybe if you want to get a head start before you start university then you can. I'll also be recommending a book that, um, well, I, I spend forever going through textbooks just to try and find a good one. There's nothing worse than getting a textbook and it not explaining things very well. So I found a textbook which I feel sort of covers some of the topics on here very well. Obviously it's not going to have all of them in there, we can't expect that much. But it does explain some of them very well indeed. And then for the rest, um, I, I recommend websites and stuff like that. But yeah. So the maths within an economics degree. So this is, I'm going to be assuming that you're going for sort of a BSc style degree or um, one where you require A level maths as opposed to the BA one where it requires less maths. Obviously, BA economics does vary over the place. So, for example, Cambridge only offers BA economics. That does not mean it doesn't include maths. That's just a sort of different kettle of fish. So, I know loads of videos talk about how economics requires maths because it is essentially applied maths. But what I don't think is very helpful is then when they don't go on to include what it is that you will be um, needing. And I'm guilty of that too in a previous video, but it's because the video wasn't really aimed at going in depth into that. But now I am going to do so. So obviously calculus is there quite a bit that you do need to know basic calculus, but maybe let's go into that a little bit more. So yeah, you need to know all about your differentiation, your product rule, your quotient rule, your chain rule, um, so on and so forth. And this kind of differentiation is what we call unconstrained optimizations. So these are unconstrained optimization problems. However, leading on from that, you will go on to do something called constrained optimization problems. This is when we're trying to maximize or minimize something um, subject to something else. So we've got a constraint going on there. Maybe the constraint is we want to maximize, let's say we want to maximize our happiness or maximize our utility, but our constraint is our income function, for example. And that's what we call a constrained optimization. And for that, you need to do something called, uh, called Lagrange differentiation. And if you just give that a quick Google, there's loads of helpful stuff online. Um, or there's a textbook by, I can't remember who it was by, but I will link it down below anyway. And there's a good textbook that goes through it. So that's the thing you can be expecting. Obviously, at school, you're used to the unconstrained optimization. But at university, you will be um, introduced to something called um, Lagrangian multiplier. Again, as well as calculus in that respect, in terms of differentiation, you will have a little bit of integration to do as well, so make sure you are competent with that. By all means, these are things that you will go over when you get there. Well, not the basic differentiation, but these other things will be things you'll go over when you get there, but it's so good if you can walk in with a bit of a head start. So if you've done further maths as well as just normal A-level maths, then actually you put yourself in a really strong position because some of these things um, that you'll end up going through, if you've covered them in further maths, then you've obviously got your head start already. Or if you did higher level maths in the IB like I did, then some of these things were already familiar to you before you went on to do economics at university. Matrices is a big one. So I know that's not in A-level maths, it's in further maths, but obviously this is something you can get your head around. And I actually don't think matrices are too difficult. I never, I was never too sure why they were in further maths because they're not that hard, but it's a big thing in economics. So make sure you can get your head around matrices. In particular, look up inverses and determinants, and this is a two by two and a three by three matrix. And then leading on from that, you're gonna to have to find something called eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Now the book that I have that explains these kind of things really, really well is this book here. It's Bridging the Gap uh, to University Mathematics, and again, I will link it down below, and it's by Gold and Hurst, and this explains uh, it so well. So if you ever want to get ahead on that, then I really recommend this textbook, and I don't think it's that expensive either. Uh, a knowledge of sequences will really help you out, so sum to infinity and geometric sequences. It's not sort of tested, um, well actually it depends what university you go to, but it's not really tested explicitly. It's just going to help you get your head around some certain concepts if you understand um, how the sum to infinity of sequences happen. Because certain things will cause a sequence and it's a lot easier to get your head around if you understand how they've got to the final result and it's all to do with that. And then, some people will argue this isn't maths, it's more statistics, but I'm going to put it into the same video, because in my eyes, you know, it all comes under the same bracket. And it's a lot to do with regressions. If you go on, well, if you do an economics degree, you'll do something called econometrics, and there's a big deal with regressions. So you need to know about R squareds, p-value, t-tests, and f-tests. So if you can have a quick look into those before you start an economics degree, that will, again, put you in really good 
stead. So that was just a quite a just a quick list on what will come up. Obviously, it's by no means complete. There, I'm sure there are things I've forgotten about or haven't included. But I mean, you you're doing a degree to learn as you uh, to learn when you're there. You're not trying to learn it all before you get there, or it'd be pointless paying. Um, nine and a bit grand to do so this is just some sort of ideas if you are maybe you're not too confident with maths and you you'd rather go in knowing some stuff then this is something to um to have a look at to get your head around so i will link everything i've said down below and i might even put this list in down below but that was all from me bye guys <laughs>